Welcome to Hip Hop Movie Club, the show that harmonizes the rhythm of hip hop with the magic of movies. Today we're talking about the legendary Full Force Brothers, who appear in the original classic House Party, and who will be making a special appearance to help us kick off our film series at Steel Stacks in Bethlehem, PA. Tickets are still available for this event on Friday, August 16th. Go to steelstacks.org and get yours now. We are three old heads who put their old heads together to vibe on these films for you. I'm Dino Wright, podcaster, filmmaker, and a longtime hip hop fan. I'm JB, 80s and 90s nostalgia junkie, and longtime hip hop fan. I'm Boogie, the DJ, and longtime hip hop fan. We all have the three George brothers in the house B Fine, who plays Zilla, Paul Anthony, who plays Stab, and Bow Legged Lou, who plays Pee Wee. Yeah, I'm mad hype about this. I can't wait to uh, have this presentation in front of. Uh, an audience there in Bethlehem, PA. Excellent job, brothers, to, to, to get full force to come out. Special thanks to our partners at Arts Quest uh, for making this happen. Shout out to DJ Arm18, who's our house DJ, who will be spinning just before the presentation of the, the screening of the movie. He linked us up with some connections, and uh, we're so hyped to have full force in the house. Right on. Yes, yes. It's going to be a great day. So just to recap, what, what we're doing here is, you know, we'll have DJ Arm spinning uh, full force and us. will be on a stage introducing the movie, The Original House Party from 1990, featuring Kid in Play and Full Force, among many others, uh, Martin Lawrence, uh, Tisha Campbell, etc. And then right afterwards, there's going to be a Q&A with Full Force, answering questions that we have for them, answering audience questions, and we'll have some giveaways for the audience. So it's going to be... A very fun and interactive experience, just like we've had in the past. But this time, we actually have celebs in the house. Real honest-to-goodness celebs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Man, it's been amazing. to uh, we've, we've come come quite a long way. So uh, we're excited to present this to you guys, our listeners, and our fans. So thank you for sticking with us for these past couple of years. We produced an episode on House Party. Well, we um, did put it out last week, so... If you want to find it, just look in our feed and it's from last week, too. Exactly. Right on. So I'm going to chat a little bit about House Party, but really focus more on full force. If you ask any old head like ourselves, you know, give me a hip hop theme movie or starring hip hop acts. After you roll off some of the OG ones like Wild Style, Beat Street, and some of the really big impactful ones like Do the Right Thing, Boys in the Hood, Juice, etc., House Party is, is right there in the center as, as one of the best comedies that came out from the hip-hop genre. Again, featuring Kid and Play, who, who are well-known. They've done a lot of things for hip-hop and the dance component of hip-hop. And they've been a lot of different movies and, and shows and, and other forms of entertainment. And you see in this movie the classic... Uh, comedic talents of John Witherspoon, the late Robin Harris, and Martin Lawrence, you know, comes on the scene. He's a comedic genius in his own right, ended up having his own show and, and some blockbuster films. So a lot of it stems from, you know, movies like this. So very impactful. Absolutely. Funny thing about a full force. One of the things that sticks in my head when I think of house party <laughs> is the, is the character of Pee Wee played by Bow Legged Lou who's a central figure to full force with his high pitched voice, <laughs> big hulking guys. And, and he's got the high pitched voice and they terrorize a uh, kid and play throughout this specifically kid. I think gets really <laughs> bullied a lot in this film, uh, harassed and, uh, yeah, the antics never stop with that. Theo. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's like the, the whole, the whole movie that, that, that held that on, um, Making kids' life uncomfortable. He starts <laughs> off in the school. You know, they follow him, chase him through the neighborhood. <laughs> yep. You know, but yeah, it's, it's hilarious. The interaction between them is meeting genius. Yeah, how cool will it be? We're going to be watching this movie with these guys in the theater with us. They're going to be there. That is just spectacular. Like, I, I can't wait for this night. So, again, that's a Friday night, August 16th. And some tickets are still available. You want to get it. It'll be an interactive experience that you will not forget. So talk about Full Force. I don't know how many uh, of the audience knows about the impact that Full Force had in the music industry. Not only did they have their own hip-hop and R&B group with multiple albums, but they wrote and produced music 
for some legendary acts. You guys want to talk about some of the performers that they worked with over the years? Like a who's who. Yeah, it's like a who's who. <laughs> I mean, they wrote the song Roxanne, Roxanne, one of the all-time hip-hop classics by UTFO. And then you get the Roxanne's Revenge by Roxanne Shante, et cetera. The big hits by Lisa Lisa and Cult Jam that you all know, like All Cried Out and a few others. They wrote Naughty Girls Need Love Too by Samantha Fox. So they actually wrote these ones. They wrote a song for Backstreet Boys, All I Have to Give. They wrote for NSYNC. Um, and they produced uh, for a lot of these acts as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they gave Lisa Lisa her trademark sound when she, That's first, right. came, she first hit the scene. She wrote and they produced her, her sound. Like, that was all them. <laughs> yeah, so... So I mentioned all cried out, but lost in emotion and head to toe. Those those, those ones, like if you if you don't Lisa Lisa Culp Jam, like those three songs, all cried out, lost in motion, head to toe, number one uh, hits. Yeah, really it's serious. <laughs> number one Billboard hits. Number one hits. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They wrote basketball by Curtis Blow, which is one of the early memorable hip hop tracks. And these guys are like legendary. Uh, they wrote for James Brown. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they wrote for Black Eyed Peas. So it wasn't even back, you know, in the early days they wrote. And, and they continued in the later years and, and wrote for uh, some of these acts. So, um, man, what um, what a resume these guys have. Yeah. Unreal. A crazy body of work. Crazy body of work. And I was doing a, a little bit more deep dive on Bowlegged Lou, and his son, Lou Star, was a rapper. And he pretty much founded Nicki Minaj, who was just international superstar. So it runs in the family. The apple doesn't fall too far from the tree <laughs> so uh yeah i'm just mad hyped to uh to see these guys live and thankful that you know they agreed to to work with us uh on this special screening yes shout out to bow-legged lou for <laughs> yeah, from, from what i know about these guys too is that they're they're very chill down to earth cool and funny as all heck <laughs> so I look, I look forward to some laughs, some good introspective um, commentary with those guys. If you look at Bullegga Lou, he he has done some comedy in the past, so he he definitely has those comedic chops, which were on display in House Party <laughs> and in the sequel, and um, yeah, on screen elsewhere as well. Almost like a clown prince of hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Max Papkin. <laughs> Very funny. Yeah. And timing is right. I mean, last year was the 50th anniversary of hip hop. We got involved with some program from uh, DJ Arm 18. He brought Cold Crush Brothers to to Arts Quest uh, by Steel Stacks. Mm -hmm. um, he brought Chuck D to the campus of Northampton Community College back in April this year, which was just like a life changing experience. So to be able to follow that up. You know, bringing in full force to Bethlehem again. We met some other old heads, and they're they're going to be uh, chomping at the bit to see these guys. And we're we're excited to be part of it. Yeah, I think we've um, we're, we're establishing a nice little uh, ground zero, if you will, will hmm. of hip hop in that area. <laughs> yeah, right. And uh, there's a bit of irony. It's kind of like you know. Traditionally, like a blue collar type town, you know, the old steel factories, and everything. But there is a nice cultural epicenter here, there. And, uh, yeah. you know, Arts Quest is at the center of it. As we're speaking right now is Music Fest. So there's a music festival that some folks know about. It is literally the largest free music festival in the country. There are um, stages throughout north side, south side of Bethlehem, all throughout the day, all different types of genres of music. You have folk, you have jazz, you have blues, you have hip-hop, rock, alternative, uh, there's even comedy. So many shows are free for the public, and then each night there's like a headliner, and uh, big names. So like Sugar Ray was there the other night, uh, Shine Down and Tonic and, and another act. Leonard Skinner's going to be there in a couple nights. Uh, Black Eyed Peas is performing. ZZ Top is performing, and Ludacris closes it out on Saturday night the 10th, so... I'm going to see if I can get over there, if we can swing it. I'd love to see Ludacris. I saw him last year at the Rock the Bells Festival, and he was electric, doing all his classics. And then, you know, all I do is win, and the crowd was mad hype. So he's going to 
he's going to bring Bethlehem down. <laughs> he, he'll be turned up over there for sure. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Bethlehem is, does a lot for uh, the arts. Uh, and again, Arts Quest is at the center of it. So another, once again, shout out to them. Our man, Anthony, program manager there. Uh, he's He does amazing work. Multiple film series and screenings. Uh, they do a lot of older classics. So whereas sadly you see the arts getting cut, you know, due to budget cuts. I mean, these guys are just pumping out amazing entertainment and giving all types of folks the opportunity to showcase their talents. Other thing, hip hop. I mean, as we're speaking also at the Olympics is break dancing for the first time, which is about time it's got its due. I know. It only took 50 years. It only took 50 years. Yeah. And there's still people grumbling about it, you know, and it's like, <laughs> get off my lawn, but it is a sport. I mean, it's so these, these B boys and B girls are just so athletic August 9th and 10th are when the, you know they're going to be uh, performing. The judges are going to be judging them based on the musicality, vocabulary, originality, technique, and execution. So I know, Dinah Wright, your brother's a B-boy, and he does a lot of breakdancing. Does he have any opinion on uh, it at the Olympics? Is he following it? Do you know? I'm sure he is. Yeah. So Jay Prime also has an event in South Jersey on Saturday, August 10th. So I might That's be perfect. able to come through. So... We'll include that information in the show notes. He's That's got awesome. a, another break in battle. So come out to support that too. Go see J prime early on, come up to Bethlehem and see Ludacris on the t- later that night. <laughs> come see us on uh-huh. the 16th. <laughs> so uh, yeah, there's some uh, amazing talent and the break dancing in, at the Olympics in Paris. The hometown guy's name is Danny Dan. He's the European champion. He's from France. So he's going to be getting, a lot of cheers from the crowd, um, but uh, there's world champions, Victor, B-Boy Victor, and B-Girl Nika. They're going to be you know, the focus for a lot of folks. And then there's an Asian champion, Shiga Kicks. And I saw some of his work uh, on his Instagram, and he he's outstanding. There's a guy named Phil Wizard. And, uh, you know, a few others and in the female side, Amy, Ayumi, and someone that goes by Asian champion is named 671. That's what she goes by. <laughs> original names, original dancing. Uh, I can't wait to see it and, and kind of put a spotlight on it. Yeah, I'm hyped about this, to be honest. Like, I've been watching, following the Red Bull Championships for... I don't know how long, for years. Decades. <laughs> and I, I mean, I, I like watching um, any kind of dance competitions where, you know, there's food. Like I used to watch, it sounds cheesy, but America's Best Dance Crew and things like shows like that. I mean, you know, it was straight up legit B-Boys in those shows. And like, mm-hmm. the legit, you know, B-Boys actually won. You know, mainly, you know, you got the Jabberwockies. Mm-hmm. Quest Crew, Super Crew, which was comp- comprised of all Red Bull champions that formed one group. I follow all of them individually, and yeah, I'm I'm, I'm hyped it for this one. Hopefully, it's not watered down. I hope I want I wanted to look as raw as possible. Yeah, I, I I'm, I'm I'm just really looking forward to it. I wish I could be there to watch it live, but it's Paris, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> LA, 2028, y'all. Yeah, save up, yes. make that happen in four years. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, our very first episode we did was B Street, right? And you have that epic dance battle at the Roxy. Mm -hmm. And again, what we always say is like all this stuff was like regionalized. It was really centered in New York. And and it's like, does anybody think this is going to grow? And boy, did it grow. I mean, it's at the Olympics right now. I mean, hip hop in general is just a multi-billion dollar industry. So These guys, it's crazy. trailblazers oh. back then. Yep. It's crazy because, like, I remember, you know, growing up, you know, taking a stab at it. And at some point, it people was like, yo, it's not cool to break dance anymore. And I'm like, why? And everybody <laughs> just stopped. And then, like, I remember, like, years later, and I'm like, wait a minute, people still break dance. I'm like, why did I stop? <laughs> it's like, man. Like, it's literally a global phenomenon. I and mean, it's just, this is refreshing. Like, I, I knew, like, like, I remember as soon as I heard the announcement that, that break dance was coming to Paris, like, I was on Facebook posting about it. You know, this was like years ago. 
Like, yeah, it's coming, it's coming. She was like, really? I'm like, no, it really is. I would, I would not post this if it wasn't. <laughs> but like, yeah, it's here now, and it's, it, I'm, it's, it's going to go down. Yeah, it's, it's exciting. And you know what's funny is that the two guys that have been the face of the Olympics are like Snoop Dogg and Flavor Flav. You know? <laughs> I mean, Snoop Dogg is doing a lot of broadcasting, and he's entertaining everybody. People are realizing even more so how charismatic he is, how affable he is. Mm-hmm. And Flavor Flav has like sponsored the women's water polo team for the U.S. Like they were lacking funding, he stepped up. I mean, it's awesome how these two hip hop legends are the face of the Olympics for a lot of folks, and they realize. I saw a funny meme where where someone said uh, someone's mother was like, "I'm really enjoying watching Snoop Dogg." on uh, the Olympic coverage and, and then, and he's like, yeah, remember you wouldn't let me buy his CD back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> How did he become like yeah, the I've grandfather or the, like the nation's grandfather or the or great uncle or whatever? <laughs> it's crazy. It's like, you know, who knew that Snoop could bring about world peace? Yeah, like right? I'm like, what? Yeah. Yeah. And flavor, flavor, not only the, the, the woman's water polo team, but I saw it, it was, um, one of the women that's on the track and field team, she posted something online that her rent was was going to be late because of some funding that she didn't, she wasn't receiving funding, and, and how the university was, you know, putting so much money into the football team. And immediately, like, you see, for your free comment on it. They like, DM me and I'll take care of it. I said, like, "What?" The disc I'm like watching it in real time. Like, wait a minute, yeah. what? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. But yeah. Who knew? Who knew? The discus thrower. Yeah. Yeah. The pop is what the Olympics needed. <laughs> That's right. I mean, hip hop is ubiquitous. It's everywhere. And it's having a great impact on the Olympic Games. So it's great to see the world recognize these folks and, and, and their contributions as well. Right on. Yeah, so maybe there'll be some legendary breakdancing battles and uh, performances at the Olympics, and it sh- hopefully is here for a long time to come. Hip Hop Movie Club is produced by your HHNCs, JB, Boogie, and Dino Wright. Theme music by Boogie. And once again, whether you're listening to the podcast or watching us on YouTube, please give us a follow. It's a real power up for us. Thanks for tuning in. And don't forget, Friday, August 16th, at Steel Stacks in Bethlehem, our house party screening with special appearance by Full Force. Tickets at steelstacks.org. 